Hello and greetings fellow StarCrafters! Welcome back to this best of three between the Blue Terran player show right here and the White Protoss player White Ra, which everyone knows, up here. So just to talk about short introduction for these players, White Ra is someone who I'm sure most people are familiar with if you are at all following the StarCraft, regular StarCraft community. Uh, he's been a really big deal since the beta and he's I mean, he's just been known for overall solid play. He also was kind of the first player to really utilize the Warp Prism in a lot of different kind of interesting ways. Uh, and that was even before it was buffed. Uh, which, by the way, like, the buff is part of the reason why Warp Prism is being used now, but it's also that people are realizing that it's quite a good unit in a number of situations. And so it's not really just the buff that's really doing it. But White Ra is quite a good player. I would say he hasn't really... He's never, like, won a big tournament, but he's always done quite well in most of the tournaments that he's participated in and does get invited to a lot of really important tournaments and beats a lot of very good players at those tournaments. Sho, on the other hand, he wins a ton of tournaments, actually. If you go to, like, his Liquipedia page, for example, he has, like, all these tournaments that he's won, but it's um, a lot of these smaller tournaments, so, like, these, like, weekly tournaments or bi-weekly tournaments where the prize winnings are, like, $100 something like that, which I'm not saying that's insignificant or anything. I'm just saying... Uh, that show, um, I mean, he's a very good player, and that he wins all those tournaments, I think that shows why he's such a good player. Uh, he also notably won, what was that, the Intel Extreme Masters, um, which is a German, well, not a German tournament, it's an European tournament, and he actually did end up winning that, uh, like, just, he just won it, he actually beat White Rod in that, so this is almost a rematch of that moment, that was actually, uh, I think that was last January, so it's been uh, kind of a while in terms of that, but... These two players have fought before and battled in many a different scene. This map, by the way, is Shattered Temple. It is the MLG version, or at least a modified version, that does have the neutral supply depots right there. They shouldn't matter too much in the Protoss versus Terran. By the way, it looks like Sho is, in fact, going for a gas. So it remains to be seen exactly what he's doing. I don't think he's going to be going for a Reaper expand. At least he's opting for the Marine for the Reaper if he's doing that. Meanwhile, Right Ra is possibly still going for a one gas fast expansion. I'm um, not quite sure if that's exactly what he's opting to quite yet, as he has got the cybernetic score. If we see the second gas or not, that'll exactly kind of tell us exactly what he's aiming to do. Looks like that Marine is going to go ahead and take out that probe right away. That probe is going to be scared away by that Marine, and the probe Marine is eventually going to be able to take it out. And still kind of waiting to see exactly what kind of tech, actually, because Sho has built up so much gas, I would guess he's going for some sort of factory tech. Although his factory has still not been laid down, but there it is right there. And uh, I think he's waiting for the uh, probe actually to be killed right now. So it remains to be seen exactly what these players are opting to be able to do right now. Looks like White Ra is sliding on down. Um, now it looks like he's just sending out additional scouting probe. Um, hmm. He is still on one gateway, so it's possible he's going for a one gateway expand. In fact, that seems likely, and it looks like, meanwhile, that show is actually opting for reactor Hellions, which is something that's actually become, you know, it started out as the really the baseline build against Zerg, and that's exactly what it is. Like, you want to do that the majority of the time when you're Terran against Zerg. I mean, obviously it's not the only strategy, but it's quite a good one. Um, as it just accomplishes so much, and against Protoss players, it's equally effective because, you know, frankly, Stalkers just don't deal that much damage to Hellions. So you can really get away with a lot of damage being dealt to um, uh, to the Hellions as they kind of sk skirt on through the Stalkers, actually, and just kind of start attacking the probes. Oh, but actually, okay, so the, since the starport is coming down, he's actually not going for a reactor expand. Oh, he got the second gas. Okay, so this is going to be a 1-1-1 one, one, one build. That's why he's building the reactor on the barracks. He's actually just to produce additional marines. He's getting a Hellion because he has extra minerals at this point in time. The tech level come down. He might switch these two out and then, um, and then build a Banshee or maybe get Cloak. And then from the Cloak, he can then use the Cloak to, um, you know, kind of deal additional damage. This Hellion is just going to kind of skirt around and see exactly what kind of damage is being dealt to White Ra. But White Ra looks like White Ra actually knows that this is coming. Nice positioning there from his Zealots. Able to stop that Hellion from getting in. But he's actually getting three additional gateways. So he's going to be doing a late four gate. Oh, with the, uh, with the um, Warp Prism, which is exactly what I was talking about, is he is aiming to... Uh, he's aiming to, it's 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 actually like a counter to the 1-1-1 one, one, one build, in that if you're expecting a 1-1-1, one, 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 you can actually just kind of warp into the back of your opponent's base, and deal a lot of damage before they're really set up, and actually just stop the 1-1-1 one, one, one in its tracks, uh, from being able to deal any damage in return. The, uh, the reason that this attack is, oh, alright, sorry about that. Alright, so... Um, the reason this attack is so effective, uh, the warp, uh, white, uh, the pr attack by 
Ooh, losing that stalker there. That's bad, bad control from White Rod. The reason the uh, War Prism attack from White Rod is actually so effective in this sort of situation is the 111 is designed to fight kind of two different ways. Well, first of all, it takes a long time to build up the necessary forces. And second of all, each of the forces is so important to the other ones. Like the Banshees are necessary against the stalkers and the forces. And I'm going to hold that thought for just a little bit as a bunch of zealots are being taken out. Nice focus firing from Sho. Able to deal with this almost immediately. Very nice job on his part. He is going to lose some SCVs. That's not going to end up being that big of a deal considering what White Rod had to give up against this attack. And actually it looks like those stalkers are going to be able to scare away that Banshee almost immediately. And now Sho is actually doing a good job. White Rod is building a second War Prism there. I'm kind of surprised that he decided to... He went in right away to the right in the middle and dropped out those Zealots. I thought he was going to kind of go off in the corner and warp in additional Stalkers and try to use the Stalkers to kite around the Marines. But it looks like he just wanted to go for the throat of the SCV production and he just wasn't really able to do any damage there. Um, so it kind of remains to be seen. But we can see that White Rod is not expanding here. He's going to go ahead and say, what? Well, you know what? If you're not going to expand, I'm not going to expand. So we can see a very long game actually. Uh, that stays with these two players on two ba or on one base for the entirety of the game. It looks like that Halion is going to spot that a Nexus has not been planted. And indeed, the Nexus will not be planted. Now, part of that, though, is that's going to take away a little bit of the inevitability from White Raw. But you can see how far White Raw is behind right now. He is down by, what, 30-some supply. And it looks like that Banshee is going to get seven kills before it goes ahead and I think it will actually escape here. White Raw had a little stalker down there, which is not ooh, able to do too much. Um, yep, looks like that Banshee is going to get away as long as it has proper control from show and he doesn't try to take any shortcuts home or anything. He's going to want to go all the way around. Um, and it actually looks like that's exactly what he's doing. Yep, very nice job from, from Sho, making sure his Banshee goes all the way around. He will repair it, and then probably right right when it gets back, or right after it's repaired or so, that's when he's, when, when he's going to want to try to move out. It looks like, actually, Siege Tech is going to be on the way right now, and actually he's getting a Templar Archives. Very interesting from White Ra. Now, if we go to Units, um, I don't think White Ra, White Ra only has three Stalkers right now, which, like, three Stalkers is just so few forces. Uh, to really be able to deal with any sort of 1-1-1 build. Now, he is getting high Templars, and that has been spotted by Sho right now, and Sho is actually going to probably want to... Oh, well, he's oh he's trying to avoid the feedback. Actually, yeah, he got a feedback to that Banshee and killed it. Um, and, oh, that might be what the high Templars are for. So that's probably what the Templar Archive is for, is just to get one high Templar so you can feedback the Banshee since they don't have Cloak. Um, they have no way to really get rid of that energy. Um, and that's actually going to be a problem for, um, for White Rock, actually, in this attack. He's going to want to repair these Banshees pretty quickly, actually. Um, however, this huge amount of siege tanks and marines is probably going to most likely steamroll the rest of White Rest forces. He's just too far behind on supply. Even if they're close on supply, it's very difficult for Protoss players to be able to hold off these sorts of all-ins. And I'm not sure what's happening with my sound right now. Hopefully, it looks like the sound almost is like behind the rest of the... Um, Alright, well, we'll see. Alright, well, hopefully the sound will fix itself. Looks like these siege tanks are going to go ahead and siege up right here. Siege mode is done. Oh, and actually that siege tank is just a little bit too close. I think it can be focus fired uh, by that Immortal. However, that Immortal will be taken out almost immediately. Some nice feedbacks there. Able to take out two of the Banshees right away. He did that for getting two High Templars. He's probably going to want to morph them into an Archon right about now. In fact, there he goes. Looks like these tanks are going to line up right here and start shelling at White Rod's base itself just as soon as he gets the Banshee close enough to be able to spot. He's going to put some ground forces up here, and the bunker is actually going to go down as well. And the thing about this is Sho can actually just take as long as he wants for this attack as well. He did pull SCVs. He's really not that far behind in economy because of mules. Now, there are two Immortals right now. No, an Immortal and an Archon inside of that War Prism right now. And he's going to try to get those on top of the siege tanks, but I'm not sure that's going to be effective. Probably Sho is actually going to want to move a couple of uh, Marines back to be able to deal with that. And, oh, it looks like the Banshee is going to be able to head and focus fire that Immortal right away. The rest of White Rod's forces are moving through, but they are melting so, so fast. And White Rod's going to have to GG out of this game. Man, he got taken out, dominated so heavily. And it all goes back to the fact that he went for that four-gate warp prism. And, I mean, basically the exact worst thing happened with that four-gate warp prism. Right, the warp prism was focused down right away, which is exactly what you want to do in those sorts of situations. As it prevents the Protoss player from warping in any additional reinforcements. And then, all of a sudden, the three Zealots that were there were just kind of surrounded by SCVs. There was even a Hellion that was well lined up firing right through it and hitting almost all of the Zelts and then the Marines were able to deal a lot of damage as well. And then White Rose was just way too behind on supply after doing that uh, you know, cute little Warp Prism trip. He got another Warp Prism, but wasn't able to use it as Sho was able to come across and just counterattack uh, basically before White Rob was able to get any kinds of forces up. So, 
White Rough falls to the dreaded 1-1-1. And, you know, I mean, it just didn't uh, quite handle that correctly. Those uh, High Templars were kind of cute, actually, um, being able to take out a couple of the Banshees. But, unfortunately for White Ra, um, I mean, you know, High Templar off of one base, just you really can't get that many of them. And then you have to get a bunch of Zealots, and Zealots aren't particularly good against Marines in these kinds of numbers. And Siege Tanks are good against Zealots, of course, as well. So, Show was able to take the game, and we'll move on to game number two. This is PGO Mooncraft setting up. 